All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 4 minus 25 is equal to 0. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite x to the power of 4 as x to the power of 2 times 2. So now I have x to the power of 2 times 2 minus 25, I'm going to rewrite as 5 to the power of 2. So I have x to the power of 2 times 2 minus 5 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So in this case, x to the power of 2 times 2, I can rewrite as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. Now I have this minus 5 to the power of 2 is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is equal to x to the power of 2, and b is equal to 5. So now I have x to the power of 2 plus 5 times x to the power of 2 minus 5 is equal to 0. So now, this is actually going to give me two equations. I have x to the power of 2 plus 5 is equal to 0, and I have x to the power of 2 minus 5 is equal to 0. So, for x to the power of 2 plus 5 equals 0, I can simply subtract 5 on both sides, so then these two cancel out, and now I'll be left with x squared is equal to negative 5. Now, I'm going to take the square root on both sides. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of negative 5, that's going to be the square root of 5 times the square root of negative 1. Now the square root of negative 1 is equal to the magazine number i. So now if I replace the square root of negative, the square root of negative 1 with i, I get x is equal to the square root of 5i. So this is my answer. And this is actually positive or negative, the square root of 5i. So these are two solutions. Now for x squared minus 5 equals 0, I'm going to add 5 on both sides. So then these two cancel out. And now I'll have x squared is equal to 5. Now, if I take the square root on both sides, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of negative 5, that's positive or negative square root of negative 5. So these are two more solutions to this problem. So my four solutions to this problem are the square root of 5, the square root of, or sorry, negative square root of 5, of the square root of 5i, and negative square root of 5i. So these are my four solutions. Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 100. So now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 5 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5 is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And m and n, we can change the places of these two, so this is the same thing as a to the power of n times n. So now, if a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that a to the power of n times m is equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So in this case, I can think of x to the power of 5 as m and 5 as n. So if I switch the places of these two, I get x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now 100 here, this is the same thing as 10 to the power of 2. So now I have x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 10 to the power of 2 to the power of 5. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 10 to the power of 2 to the power of 5, that's going to equal 10 to the power of 2 times 5, which is 10 to the power of 10. So I have x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 10 to the power of 10. Now, I'm going to let x to the power of 5 equal to the variable y. So now if I replace x to the power of 5 with y, 
I get y to the power of y is equal to 10 to the power of 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 10. Now remember how we set x to the power of 5 equal to y. So I have x to the power of 5 equal to 10. So now to solve this, I'm going to take the fifth root on both sides. So now I have the fifth root of x to the power of 5 is equal to the fifth root of 10. Now, the fifth root of x to the power of 5 is simply x, so I have x is equal to the fifth root of 10. So this is my answer. All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 100 minus 2 to the power of 99. Now, first off, I'm going to replace 100 here with 99 plus 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 99 plus 1 minus 2 to the power of 99. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is simply equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, a to the power of m plus n, well, in the, we have 2 to the power of 99 plus 1. We think of a as 2, m as 99, and n as 1. So now I'm going to put this in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So a is 2, so I have 2 to the power of 99 times a to the power of n, so 2 to the power of 1. Now I have this minus 2 to the power of 99. Now from here, as you can see, both terms have 2 to the power of 99 in them, so I'm going to simply factor out 2 to the power of 99. So now I have 2 to the power of 99 times... Well, 2 to the power of 99 times 2 to the power of 1 divided by 2 to the power of 99, well, all that's going to be left is 2 to the power of 1, and negative 2 to the power of 99 divided by 2 to the power of 99 is negative 1. So now this is equal to 2 to the power of 99 times 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, and 2 to the power of 99 times 1 is simply 2 to the power of 99. Now I actually have a second method of solving this problem. So my problem was 2 to the power of 100 minus 2 to the power of 99. However, this time, instead of changing 100 to 99 plus 1, I'm going to change 99 here to 100 minus 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 100 minus 2 to the power of 100 minus 1. Now I can rewrite this as 2 to the power of 100 minus 2 to the power of 100 plus negative 1. And remember, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 100 plus negative 1, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of negative 1. Now if I factor out 2 to the power of 100 from here, 2 to the power of 100 times 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 1. 2 to the power of negative 1, that's equal to 1 half, so I have 2 to the power of 100 times 1 minus 1 half. 1 minus 1 half, that's simply 1 half, so I have 2 to the power of 100 times 1 half, and 1 half is simply 2 to the power of negative 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of negative 1. And remember, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 100 plus negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 99. So this is my answer.